What's up, ladies and gents? It's Jeff with I Download Blog. We have our co-host, yes, Sebastian Page is back in back in action. We have Sebastian and we have Cody on the line. What's up, guys? Hey, what's up, man? Hi. It's nice to have you back, Sebastian. It really is. Thank you. It's nice to be back. I've been, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been gone for a long, long time, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Was it a month? Yeah, I think over a been, month. Yeah, over a month, we were gone. We were out of the out of the house for um, six or seven weeks. I think. Wow. Who checked your mail yeah. when you were gone? Well, what I did, uh, you can hold, hold your mail. Um, you can put, put a hold on your mail uh, uh, yeah. via the post office, and they do this for only 30 days. So the first 10 or 15 days, I had my neighbor, who's had, who also happens to be a good friend, um, go and pick up the mail you know, for us. And then the uh, post office hold kicked in, so we didn't have to do anything. And when I came back on Monday, I went to the post office and and picked up like the gigantic basket of mail. <laughs> I bet that was fun to go through. One for you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a good mail sorter though. I'm like, every time I look at the mail, I'm like, it's either trash or on the counter. You know, there's no like in between, what do I do with this or whatever, I'm not sure. I, so when I have a basket like this, or so when I come back from the mail, my first stop is in the garage by the recycle bin. I open the recycle bin and I automatically throw out any kind of advertisement or like the any kind of you know spam mail read really, that we don't need. Publishers clearinghouse. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sometimes my wife is like, "Oh, my friend told me there's there's a coupon for anthropology in the in the mail. Did you get it?" I'm like, "It's probably in the trash." Oh, here. my wife would kill me if I did that. <laughs> That's her favorite store, man. I know. <laughs> so, um, but that's my uh, that's my technique, which is very similar to my email technique. You know, it's just yeah, I either act on it right away or it's going straight to um, to the trash. Nice. So, so how was France? It was hot. It was really hot for a good week. It's been. Uh, it was um, unusually hot. Um, and you know where I'm from? I'm from the country, and I'm from the east of France. It never really gets really hot or it gets cold, but never really cold, never really hot. So my parents don't have air conditioning. And for a week, we were just like sweating 24-7 and, and uh, no air conditioning, just a poor little fan like blowing air on us. How hot is really um, hot? Uh, how much would that be in Fahrenheit? That would probably be around 100. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. Without yeah. air conditioning, that's pretty... Without air conditioning, yeah, that was that was pretty intense. That's when you go get a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but see, even like where I'm from, the hotels probably don't even have air conditioning because you don't need it. You need it like every five years for a week. You know, that's it. Um, the last time like a big heat wave uh, hit France like this was, I think, ten years ago or seven years ago. So that was a long, long time ago. It's, it was very unusual. But um, I mean, besides that, besides that, everything was very good. Um, I stuck up on food a lot. Uh, as I was studying Cody, I gained like ten pounds, and, and uh, I already lost lost five of them, so I'm back kind of back on track. But um, and uh, everybody was very happy to uh, see uh, me and my wife, but most importantly, my uh, daughter Chloe. I was gonna say, yeah, um, I bet that was good yeah. for them. <clears throat> I'm an, I'm I'm an only child, so. Chloe is the only grandchild for my parents, and uh, she is the first great great grandchild on one side of the family, and and she was the favorite. She was a hit. <laughs> she was definitely she was definitely the favorite, and she's so funny and smart, and she kind of speaks a little French and a little English. And how old is she now? Was, she's twenty months. Twenty months. Wow. Yeah. It seems like you just had her. Yeah. Yes, I know. It does seem like it, but it goes so fast. You know, like when when you're you're a kid and you you hear like parents or or adults tell you all oh, time, you know, enjoy this time because it goes by very fast. And you're like, come on, dude, I want this, this period of my life to be over. I want to be 16 so I can have a girl. I want to be 21 so I can drink. I want to, you know, and uh, that's when you get older. Like, ah, oh, yeah, they were right. I, I wish I had enjoyed it a little more, maybe, or I don't know. I think that all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's because you're getting old. That's a sign you're getting old when you start thinking about this. <laughs> don't, don't say that. Yeah, we're all getting old. Yeah. We're all past uh, 30, right? Yep. Nope, I'm not yet. 
Oh. <laughs> well, you're getting. I got a I got a couple more years yet. I actually got a birthday coming up uh, next month in September. So. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so is it obviously we have a new thing going on here? It's three of us, right? Yeah. So it, yeah. it's going to take a little, I guess, getting used to that. But I think we can we can do it, right? Don't you? Yeah, I think it's going to take a little use to it and figure out. You know, and get comfortable with each other. I think the the most important part is like not to step on each other's um, toes all the time. Meaning, like you know, Cody started talking and me started talking at the same time, maybe. And and uh, it might take a little use to, but um, there's nothing we can't do. It's there. No, I think we'll handle it. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah. So, I know Cody, you saw the new Jobs movie this weekend. I know you're anxious to kind of touch on that. What What did you think about it? We read your review. Um, right. What, what is your, can you give us a, a brief synopsis of your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. Um, at the heart of this movie is the story of how Apple began. And I think that's my biggest, that's the biggest plus for the movie. You take away all the negative stuff, you know, that I said in the review or that you've read in other reviews. At the heart of it is just this really cool story about how the world's biggest company right now, right, by market cap, it started in a garage with a bunch of ragtag, you know, I don't know if they're teenagers. I think they were in their early 20s, but just these kids like soldering, soldering circuit boards and selling them to the computer store down the street. It's just so crazy to me that it went from that to where it is now, you know, looking at my iPhone, looking at my iPad, 30 or 40 years in between those two. It's just it's crazy to me. So the, I like that part of the story. Um I thought Ashton did a good job. I wouldn't say a great job. I would say a good job. I don't think Ashton Kutcher has the acting skills to transcend parts. And that's not necessarily a knock, knock against him. I don't think there's a lot of people out there that do it. I think maybe, I don't know if you know, Daniel Day-Lewis, the guy who played Lincoln. And he won a Best Actor Award, yeah. of the Year Award for that. Yeah, um, you can lose yourself in his role. You forget that it's him playing, but I didn't for one second forget that I was watching <laughs> Ashton Kutcher. You know, his voice is so distinctive. His his look is so distinctive. I didn't for one second forget that I was watching Ashton Kutcher trying to pretend to be Steve Jobs. And I think that kind of ruined it for me. Um, but like I said, it was still enjoyable. You asked me yesterday, I think it was, if it was better than Pirates of the Silicon Valley, that what was that 1999 movie with Noah Wiley? Yeah, and, that was great. Yeah, it was a good movie, and it was a made-for-TV movie, and you asked me if I thought this was better than that, and I had a hard time saying yes, didn't I? And that should kind of tell you <laughs> where this movie's at. It, I, it, you could see why you could see why it didn't appeal to like the critics and stuff. I think it got like a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was just, it was poorly directed. I don't think the script was written very well. Um, it just kind of bounced around from scene to scene. It was just, I don't know, it's tough to say. Everybody I've talked to doesn't like it, and they're not recommending it. And I I think that kind of speaks for itself. So it's kind of all over the place, kind of scatterbrained? Yeah, real scatterbrained. So I guess, you know, decent performance from Ashton Kutcher, de- really good performance from Josh Gad, the guy who played Steve Wozniak. And actually the whole supporting cast, was gr- you know, did a good job. But just, yeah, the way they structured the movie, it was nothing like, you know, social network, right? That's the big one everybody's comparing tech films now too because it won best movie of the year i think um and that was written by aaron sorkin that was about the founding of facebook it just it doesn't it's not even on the same level it's so far apart it's not even funny between the quality of this movie and the quality of that movie and i think that's what keeps it from appealing to audiences outside the apple camp right yeah it it seems a little low budget just like the trailer that came out i don't know when it came out but it just seemed like made for db Oh, it was low budget. I think it was just like the budget was just like twelve million, and it seemed rushed, right? It seemed like we just found out in like last April that they were that he was cast for the role. Um, Ashton Kutcher was cast for the role of this movie, and here we are, just a year. I mean, it was done in February when it debuted at the Sundance right. Festival. So, I mean, that was less than a year it took them to film it. That's kind of seems kind of rushed to me. Sebastian, you plan on seeing it? Yeah, I was I was planning on seeing it and looking at the reviews. I probably will not go to the movies and see it. I'd probably wait for it to um, come out on DVD or um, on iTunes or something to get it. Um, but to go back to, to, to what you said, Cody, about um, it seems like we just found out about this movie. I think this movie um, 
didn't hit a home run because it was very much rushed out. And I think, I don't know anything about the director and, uh, and, and the cast and the producer and all these people who work on the movie, but it seems that they saw an opportunity to, um, to, have, to have the word buzz about them and talk about them and to talk about the movie because that was an easy topic. You know, Steve Jobs just, just died. Um, the biography just came out and uh, there was a lot of interest in, in, in Steve Jobs at the time and still is today, I think. Um, and I, I think these people saw an easy, uh, an easy way out and said, hey, let's do a movie on Steve Jobs and let's make sure we do it before uh, Aaron Sorkin comes up with his uh, own movie about Steve Jobs, which would probably be um, a little better. Um, and that's going to be based on the biography, right? Yeah. It is okay. Well, they yeah, have license. Know. Yeah, they have license rights to that biography, and they actually have um, Steve Wozniak on board as a consultant. And oh wow! So between those two things and Aaron Sorkin's talent, right? He's the one who wrote that the wrote the script for Social Network we were just talking about. Um, between all those three things, I think the movie's going to be way better. And I think you're right, Sebastian. I think that these guys heard that they Sony picked up a Aaron Sorkin script for their Steve Jobs movie, and these guys said we got to go first or not go at all. Yeah. Well, I'm still planning on seeing it, but like Sebastian said, I'll probably <laughs> wait until it's... So, uh, so I'm thinking with a $12 million budget, probably half of the budget came up, it came up in um, Ashton Kutcher's pockets, probably, you know? Because he probably doesn't do this for free. Um, he, he probably made a couple million. I don't know if he made half the budget, $6 million, but he probably made, um, I'd say, a couple million at least. Yeah. Isn't he the most... The best paid actor on television right now? Television, yeah. I think they offered yeah, I think they offered him a pretty crazy deal to take over the two and a half men spot, like a million an episode or maybe a little bit more than that. Well to sum up, I guess, if you're an Apple fan, I recommend seeing it. You don't have to see it in theaters. You can wait till it comes out. I mean honestly, the way it performed at the box office this weekend, it may not be in theaters much longer, and you may not have to wait much longer uh, for it to hit iTunes. But Apple fans should see it. I'm not going to recommend this movie to my mom or anybody like that. So, okay, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the next obvious big topic is new iPhones. Um, that was pretty much uh, confirmed by the Wall Street Journal that we're going to see two new iPhones this September, early September. I'm guessing at the uh, September 10th event that is uh, scheduled. What do you guys think about that? Do you? I want to. Yeah, I want to hear Sebastian's take on this because he's been gone for a while. So he's been gone since the September 10th event got announced and, and, and since the new iPhone rumors started circulating. So I'd like to see what Sebastian thinks. Um, well, I was very skeptical about the gore, the, the two new, I mean, two new iPhones. Okay, there's two, two things. There is the, 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 the iPhone 5S that's going to come up and there is the, the iPhone 5C, presumably called. Uh, could be something else, of course, that's going to come in probably with plastic shells and, and uh, an array of different colors. Um, to me, that sounds like a no-brainer. The 5S, same thing, you know, that's no surprise here. Uh, the big surprise to me was the rumors about the Gold iPhone. And I was having a very, very hard time um, believing this rumor of a Gold iPhone. And... Um, I didn't believe it until someone said, well, actually, it's probably not a gold iPhone. It's it's most likely a, a champagne iPhone. So, you know, like very uh, light uh, gold color. And uh, and we saw a couple mock-ups and everything kind of made sense all of a sudden to, uh, to me. I remember last week, you know, you, you pointed to a post from uh, René Ritchie on uh, Twitter uh, saying he made some good points. And it did make some, make some good points, but it still wasn't seeing the gold iPhone and that's because I'm so close-minded to me gold iPhone was like hard gold you know like very shiny and tacky dark gold bling 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 yeah bling bling <laughs> a gold iPhone and I, I didn't for one second think that gold was probably you know a word used uh, vaguely to describe what would actually be champagne color like something very elegant and discreet and uh, Probably a little feminine too, but I don't know. I reserve my judgment until we actually see it. Um, <laughs> right. So, so now I'm kind of attracted to from the mock-ups again we saw, which might be very different from what we're gonna have. Uh, there were some very nice mock-ups out there, and uh, 
you know, I actually um, consider maybe for a minute getting one of those. I don't know. We shall see. I think it looks really good as far as the mock-ups are concerned. As long as, like Sebastian said, it's champagne and not, you know, hard gold, like, you know, rope chain gold from the 80s, like <laughs> run, DNC, run DNC gold, then we're good. As long as it's, flame. Yeah. As long as it's <laughs> the champagne color, then I think it looks very elegant. It does look a little feminine, but hey, I, I'm completely confident. You know, I was thinking the white iPhone 5, when it came out, was very feminine. And um, I bought the black iPhone 5, and I returned it two weeks later for the white one. Um, so, you know, I, only, as you say in French, only imbeciles don't change their mind. So women change wow. their mind. No, That's actually I, a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what, what, do you, what do you think, Cody? What Are you into it? Or... I'm exactly the same as, as you guys. When we first started seeing mock-ups of that darker gold, um, I was really turned off by the idea. I thought there's just no way this was too gaudy. I mean, all the same words, everything you guys thought. But um, I remember seeing some buttons. Um, it was a mute button, volume buttons, and a power button um, components, like light gold components, like champagne, like we're talking about. Um, I think it was almost two weeks ago now, um, floating around the web, pictures of these buttons belonging purportedly belonging to the iPhone 5S. And I thought, you know what? Those, that light gold, it's almost like a rose gold, um, would just be perfect. That would be right up Apple's alley, real classy looking. Like you said, it's a little feminine, but I mean, I, I just think it would sell really well. And then, you know, as the more reports have come out over the last few days and they said, hey, it's actually this lighter color. Um, it's not dark gold. Uh, yeah, I, just like you guys, I've, I'm bought in. I really think it's going to happen. I think the Wall Street Journal confirmed it i know all things deconfirmed it um so it looks like it's going to happen and I'll, I'll have to see it i'll have to play with it um before i make up my mind if i would buy it i'm really mad that i passed on the white iphone sebastian i actually remember when you bought the black and you returned it for white i tried to do that but i was just outside my 30-day return period or whatever and i was so mad because i wanted the white after seeing how many people had flip-flopped. Yeah. Well, and it, it looks cool. It looks cool. What what is what do you guys think the gold iPhone will it offer anything different besides the color will it differentiate itself anymore with features? No. No, the only way I could see it is if uh is if Apple made it exclusive. And I don't really see that cuz I think it'll be really popular, so why not offer it across the board, right? But I think if it was going to be special in any way, maybe they would make it only for the 128 gigabyte model that we're hearing about, right? That's a rumor um, because that'll be a really expensive model. That'll be in the seven, $800 even with the, uh, uh, well, let's see here. What is the 64 gigabyte? So 399 Subsidized. I think it's 399, isn't it? Yeah. So this, I mean, a 128 would be 499. 499 or, I mean, we're talking five or 600 bucks for a phone, right? On subsidy. <laughs> So why not make that the gold model and just kind of let everyone know, hey, I, <laughs> I dropped a huge chunk of change on this phone. It's almost like, yeah, I need to tell people I've upgraded because it's going to look <laughs> exactly the same as the iPhone five to the neck, you know, just you know from a distance. Um, right. So this is a good way to say, hey, uh, I got it like that. <laughs> right. What do you? And since you're on, since you're on the subject of. Of uh, you know distinctions between phones, um, it's something that kind of bothers me about the iPhone 5s. And again, that's again assuming that we're going to see an iPhone 5s. The problem is iOS 7. I've been thinking about this. iOS 7 is such a big, big, big software update, such a big departure from what we've seen all the way up to iOS 6. To me, iOS 7 deserves. Uh, a, a new a new phone, and I, I know the iPhone 5s um, will will be a new phone on the inside. You know, it will be everything will be upgraded, maybe a better camera, processor, everything you want. Um, but it will still be the same phone, the same phone on the outside. And that's something I've been thinking about. I, said, I wish Apple would come up with a different phone for iOS 7. You know, make it big. It's a big software update. Make a big a change on the, on the on the design of the phone, Pro that probably not going to happen. But that was my my uh, my wish. Um, up until we saw so many confirmations that the iPhone 5s is 
that's even happen. Yeah, and Apple normally, I mean, they don't change their their S series updates are usually pretty much identical from the out, outside at least yeah. to the previous versions. Like the 3GS looked almost like the 3G, the 4S looked like yeah. the 4, and the 5S presumably will look like the uh, iPhone 5. Yeah, that is true. Um, so people won't be able to tell unless I get the champagne <laughs> version that I've got an iPhone 5S. So, um, will they call it champagne, you think? What, what do you think they'll market it as? Gold? I think they'll call it champagne. Golden wine, or you think uh, so? Yeah, gold, gold sounds tacky. Very. Um, what did you say on Twitter, Sebastian? Uh, some sparkling kind of wine. wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because champagne is a region of France and... And you can't call sparkling wine champagne if it's not made in the French region of uh, champagne. Um, so any, you know, when you buy champagne, usually you know it's from France. I, uh, I think that speaking to what you were just talking about, Sebastian, when they need a new phone with this new OS. I think that's why the iPhone 5C is going to do really well. We've talked about this. It comes in these bright colors. Um, I mean, even though it's plastic, I know people are going to hate on it because it's plastic and not aluminum. And, you know, why is Apple making such a substandard product, blah, blah, blah. But I think this plastic, it's smooth. It's got these nice rounded edges. I think they look cool. And with all these different colors matched up with iOS 7 and all its new colors, I think it's just going to be a huge hit. I, I do believe it's going to be a huge hit. I I think there's a lot of people and, and for a long time, too, for probably since the first or second iPhone, what I've always wanted, actually that was since the iPhone 3GS, when you know we had the iPhone 2G, which was the first iPhone, and then there was the iPhone 3G, and then the 3GS came out and it was the exact same phone as the 3G. And uh, you know, uh, when you spend five or six hundred dollars in a phone, I, I like to, I like to know, I like, I like people to know that I have the latest phone. You know, right. I, I'm kind of like this. I, I like, you know, I used to like nice, nice cars. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think I dress nice and I have, you know, good taste and things. And I like labels and I like brands and I think they're comforting and nice. Um, so for a long time, I was like, I wish Apple would come up with an iPhone whatever and an iPhone Pro. Um which means like the iPhone whatever would be the iPhone for everybody, basically for my mom and my, and my aunt. And the iPhone Pro would be for people like us, you know, right. who don't mind spending an, another 100 or 200 bucks to have like the top of the line, best of the best iPhone. And, um, and I think my wish has been, uh, has been uh, granted here because I think the 5S and the, the future models that are going to come out are going to be the Pro version and the 5Cs and the future version of the, the most more affordable iPhone are going to be for the masses, really, and for people like my mom and, and my father-in-law who doesn't want to spend 200 bucks in the phone, you know. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm really pumped about that. Not only that, but I think the iPhone um, 5C is probably going to do extremely well in um, a country like China, for example. And uh, there's been a rumor of uh, Apple um, inking a deal with China Mobile um, uh, sometime soon. And if that happens, I mean, Apple is going to kill it. Um, right. A gold iPhone, a champagne iPhone, who's, um, you know, people who have money in, in China and in Asia would probably die for. And then the, the the cheaper version or the more affordable version of the phone, I mean, I think they're going to kill it, not only in the U.S., but mostly in countries like China and in, uh, Asia. I think it's yeah. going to be very, very successful. So what, it, what, is, what do you guys plan to do? Will you get, first of all, will you purchase an iPhone C? Uh, probably not. You know, I used to buy every iPhone coming out, but that's when there was just one coming out one, every right. year. <laughs> you know, two, I, I, will, I will buy the, um, I will definitely buy the 5S. You know, I will be um, either lining up at AT&T or um, doing it online if the system works. Um, but I will probably not get an iPhone 5C. Cody? Um, 
I think I will definitely be getting the iPhone 5S. Like Sebastian, I'll either be lining up at our local AT&T store. Actually, I did that last year, and it was kind of fun. But I, uh, I will definitely be getting that, and I will definitely, if it depends on the price of the iPhone 5C, if it's inexpensive, like 350 or less, 300 or less for sure, I could justify that to myself as almost like, hey, I could, it's just like purchasing an iPod Touch, right? Because what is a 16 gig, you know, with the camera, not the one without the camera, but what does the 16 gig iPod Touch go for? Like two, is it 80, 299, something like that. So I could justify that because I don't have an iPod Touch. So I could be like, well, this is a testing device or, you know, whatever. But saying that, you got to understand that there's also a redesigned iPad coming out, mm-hmm. iPad 5 and the iPad mini. And I've been wanting to upgrade to a new MacBook Pro if one of those shows up. So my wallet's like laughing at me like, where do you think this is all going to come from? Yeah, I think I'm probably just going to get the uh, 5S too. I don't think I'll. Uh get the 5c but of course i've been known to change my my <laughs> mind from time to time so just been known to do this random <laughs> hardware purchase hey guys i bought a macbook air today one of the new ones <laughs> hey how's that how's that going for you by the way have you decided to sell your macbook pro retina i did actually you did sell it yeah okay on ebay um craigslist wow yeah you got that's some guts not only for you when to did, sell it but for when them did to that buy happen it. um like friday Oh, okay. So now I'm just rocking a 11 inch MacBook Air, the new Haswell. Wow. Yeah, I know. But it's so far so good, man. I'm I'm really impressed with this thing. Like, it's running like a champ. Great battery life. It's small. I can just grab it and go. I don't really have any regrets, actually. Hmm. So you do have an external monitor, right? Yes, I have a Thunderbolt display. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that makes it really yeah. easy because everything, like my keyboard, my mechanical keyboard, is hooked up. All my podcasting stuff is all, I just plug it into the Thunderbolt and I'm good. It's really nice. Man, the the performance difference though, I couldn't get over it, that. It's a pretty huge performance difference, there's no <laughs> question. But, um, you know, it, what, it takes an extra 10 minutes to render a video now instead of, well, maybe 5 to 10 minutes, depending on what type of video it is. Or sure. extra mm-hmm. 10 minutes to mix down a podcast, but... The benefit is that I get a, a a really compact mat that I that has ridiculous battery life, and I can just grab it and go and work on the road. And it's not as loud either; it's a lot quieter. So when filming and recording like this, it's actually better. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if I could give up the pro, but interesting. Interesting that you're finding Well, it. and another reason th- that I mentioned last week is that I was coming up on my um, one-year anniversary, and these devices have a hit. You know, I already had a problem with it before where the um, logic board died. Um, right. So I was due to pay 350 in uh, Apple Care, And, you know, without that, it would be kind of ridiculous to keep the laptop because fixing that logic board problem was like a $700 repair without Apple Care. Right. I'm coming up on my one year and I'm kind of facing a similar dilemma. Yeah. And that's kind of reason why I got rid of it just because I didn't want to pay 350 and I figured, Hey, I will, I will give this a shot and see how it goes. You guys always buy Apple care. No, I never, I, never, yeah. never. But with the retina MacBook pro, you need Apple care. Just because of how expensive it is, especially the fixes. Yeah. That's it's ridiculous. I've... And it, it gar- it's guaranteed. It's going to have problems guaranteed. Wow. Yeah. So let's talk about some tweaks, though. Yeah, uh, we're, we're supposed to be let's talk jailbreak. <laughs> let's talk about everything except jailbreak. Well, that's because we're, we're just so happy you're back. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. getting caught up. And it's oh, been a big week, actually, guys. for Apple News. <laughs> so, so the first big, um, well, actually last week, I think, uh, a new tweak called Reminisce. Did you guys, were you able to look at that? Ooh, no, I, yes. I don't know if I came across that one. Reminisc was the tweak that allowed you to uh, quickly swipe on the screen to bring up your recently used apps. Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually did see this one where you, it kind of pops up in like the middle, like the little bar pops up across the middle and it shows you all your, yeah, I I saw that actually. Yeah, and you can actually, go ahead, Sebastian. How do you you pronounce this, Jeff? Uh, Reminisce. Reminisce, right. Because I saw there was a comment about it. The guy was calling you out from... uh, 
pronouncing it wrong. And so yeah, I, went probably to, I, went, I went online and, <laughs> and looked for the pronunciation of the word. And, and uh, yeah, it was reminisce. Yeah. Just, uh, I, I didn't know this word. So, I, uh, you know. Uh, just reminisce on the good old days. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. what I saw online. Right. Yeah, but it's a really cool tweak because you can actually, Cody, swipe anywhere on the screen. It doesn't actually have to be the middle. Um, okay. And that little thing, little, little bar shows up with all your recently used apps, and you can quickly switch to those apps. Mm -hmm. It's a great tweak. Yeah, that looks great. Uh, from the video that you made, it looks like um, it's, um, you know, it's very quick and it seems to be no lag at all. The one problem I have with that is... You know, I always have problems. I always, I'm always the devil's <laughs> advocate here. I'm always like looking for the little things. Um, how would that work with something like Zephyr? Yeah, you're going to have problems. Yes, they're going to have problems. <laughs> or look, uh, what about iOS 7? Assuming we're going to have and hoping we're going to have a jailbreak for iOS 7 when it comes out. Um, you know, for example, there, there's, there's more gestures now in iOS 7, for example, in the... Uh, in the message application, you can uh, swipe um, back. In back, Safari, yeah. you can swipe back and, and uh, forward to go uh, to the previous and the uh, next uh, page. Um, so that's something that wouldn't work very well with that, right? Right. It's going to be interesting to see how he adjusts this tweak to that because it's still in preview. Um, mm -hmm. It's not out yet, but um, it's something that, that he's going to have to find an answer for. And if I had a piece of advice, it would be to do something like Zephyr, I believe, has that. Have, uh, load up a list of all your apps you have running on your phone and let you choose to turn it on or off for specific applications. So by default, it would be on for every app, but you could go uh, in the settings and say, turn, turn Reminisce off for Safari, turn Reminisce off for um, Snapseed or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Or Netflix, like or Netflix. any kind of video, video playing app where you yeah. don't want that to pop up. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. But it's a, it's a great looking tweak. Um, it's obviously still in progress, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's, yeah. it makes it so easy to switch applications like really fast. Yeah. Anything that can save me two taps on the home button is a, is a win really, you know, I, 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 I still think the double, um, Double tap, double press on the home button is kind of a kind of tedious, yeah. Tedious, yeah, it's tedious. You know, it's just two, it's just two pushes of a button, but that's one too many. Um, <laughs> I think there's there should be gestures for that. Anyway, yeah. Do we have any uh, idea of when it's going to be out? Uh, no, no. So it's just mm -hmm. a work in progress. But stay tuned. We'll have more on yeah. reminisce, reminisce. <laughs> Next one is uh, Code Scrambler, and this allows you to scramble your passcode, the, the actual numbers on the passcode lock screen. Right. Um, so say your passcode's one, two, three, four. Well, it'll actually scramble those numbers in various areas on your passcode lock so that people can't like peer over your shoulder and memorize which buttons you pressed. Or like the sequence, yeah. Right. Uh, I don't know about this one. Yeah, you didn't seem impressed in your video. It was like, it almost makes it more complex for the user. Yes. Yeah. Which is never okay. I ran this for two days on my device, and I hated it. Um, <laughs> at the end of the two days, I was just so glad to get this off my phone because it made it literally like just such a chore to just, even with the passcode, like one, two, three, four, it was a chore to enter it in because the locations of the numbers changed each time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know it's supposed to secure your device, but if it makes it more inconvenient for the user, it's not something that the user is going to use. Right. Yeah. And uh, apparently it's not optimized for the <laughs> retina display either. Yeah, that's another big knock on it. It doesn't have retina compatibility. Um, so it's kind of weird because it, yeah. how long how are, are you retina devel devices? Yeah. How are you right. developing anything for, for anything but retina right at this point? Yeah. I mean, how many generations has it been? No, it's yeah, three. Since, the since 2010, 4. yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, there's no, there's really no excuse at this point for releasing a tweak that's not, or releasing any kind of application or jailbreak tweak for the iPhone without it being optimized uh, for the Retina display. Yeah. 
99 cents on CDO's Big Boss Repo. Um, mm -hmm. It is called Code Scrambler. You be the decider on that one. Right. <laughs> and for 99 cents, you can't even tell people, well, why don't you try it out and make a call? I mean, who's going to pay a dollar for a test run, you know? Yeah. So, anyways. What else we got on the <laughs> docket? I think we have uh, Odo OK, which is uh, another uh, passcode related tweak. This one um, saves you really a tap when you type your password, and if it's a complex passcode, uh, other than like a digit, uh, like a num numerical password, um, it saves you uh, the action to tap on OK. So, for example, if your password is uh, password. You know, instead of typing P A S S W O R D and tapping OK, as soon as you um, tap the last letter, which would be the D in this case, um, the device is going to unlock. Right. Hence the name Auto OK. It automatically tapped OK for you. Small, small tweak. Um, but you know, if if I had a password on my device, and if it was a uh, complex passcode. I would definitely use this, you know, if it can set me typing okay, it's just a brainer, right? Yeah, and a lot of people are saying, like, at least on the video, that we're just lazy bums because we want to use this. But it, it's a legitimate tweak that saves time, even maybe like a millisecond, but hey, a millisecond's a millisecond. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's how I see it. Because it's free, right? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's one of these little tweaks that makes your life easier and it's not going to change it. But it makes it like just that easier, and I'm all about that. Yes. And they just start to add up, right? All the milliseconds that these different tweaks save you. So if you have this, and you have, let's say, you have Zephyr, where you don't have to double tap your home button, you can just swipe up. Those all add up and end up making you a lot more efficient, right? Yeah, you know, like you said, what five seconds at the end of the day? <laughs> in, in a week, in a week, that's thirty-five seconds. That's about uh, two minutes every two weeks. That's about four minutes per month. That's like 50 minutes a year, guy. <laughs> you say 50 minutes a yeah. year. That's an hour. Almost an hour. You're, you just yeah, gain that's an back. hour. You save an hour a year. That's something you could do, uh, you know, if you're watching TV or... Eating a hot dog. Walking or... the dog. You said eating a hot dog. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, okay. Again, it's free on City as a Big Boss Repo. Next up, we have App Swiper. This is really cool. I like this one. Um, this is a tweak that allows you to swipe up on your applications right on your home screen to kill those apps. And it also displays how much RAM the application is taking up as well when you swipe up on it. That part's pretty cool. The fact that it displays how much RAM an app is taking up, right? Because you'll you'll be going along and you'll feel like it'll feel like your iPhone's running a little more sluggish than normal and you can solve that just by a few quick taps on some app icons. Yeah. I like it. It's, um, and it also like labels, it makes your, uh, the label for the app icon, it puts it in like a color. So it has various colors that you can choose from, uh, when the application is actually running, then you'll see beneath it, it'll have it colored, uh, right. the app name. So that way you can easily identify which apps are running or not. Mm -hmm. Not very pretty, by the way, like this, um, the way um, apps are um, highlighted. Yeah, it's not the most um, gorgeous tweak. It's not... I, I think there would be uh, better ways to do it, like maybe adding like a, a little dot, just like in iOS 7, you know, when you have a new app update, or when the app has been updated, you have a little blue dot right next to it. It's more subtle, it's more... Uh... But the real problem here, Sebastian, is that they don't offer it in champagne color. That's, that's ah. the real issue. Here. <laughs> here we go. That's the problem. Yeah, but uh, App Swiper is a 99 cent jailbreak tweak. It's available on what else? The city is Big Boss Repo. I recommend it. It's a good tweak. Is that something you'll be keeping? No. Just because I don't, personally, I don't think it is uh, worth it to try to micromanage iOS. I think it does a pretty good job of managing that's it. itself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's um, the same here. So, I mean, it's, I know. In some cases, it can be beneficial to kill certain apps, but generally speaking, iOS does a pretty good job of managing itself. Yeah, we had this conversation before on a previous, previous podcast, and uh, we're not very big users of uh, the killing feature. Right. 
And, and usually when there's an app to kill, you know which one it is. You know, Pandora. You know it's going to be Skype or, you know, it's some app like this. It's going to be dragging you down. Um, so, but, but I know a lot of our um, readers are very um, on top of that stuff. So I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate this tweak. Right. And then we have one last tweak. Yes. I'm it excited is, about this one. It's a preview. Uh, it's from Sentry, Creative Oxo, Luna, various other uh, tweaks and stuff like that. Uh, designer of Applo, the recent recently released theme for Winterboard. This is a uh, a tweak called Anemo, and it brings quick reply to the stock messages app. Did you guys see this? Yeah, I saw it. I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It looks, I mean, it, just like anything Sentry does, it looks great. And uh, it almost it doesn't look quite as native as I think I would like it to, but it looks very much like something Apple would do, right? It's very well designed um, to access mm-hmm. it when you get a banner, um, like a text message come across a flip down banner. Um, you'll see a little icon. You tap that icon. You're automatically in a quick reply box. I love it. I, I love it because I don't use like the, what is it? The by SMS and the, what's the other one? Messages Plus. Yeah, I don't I don't use stuff like that. So to have a standalone quick reply feature like this, it'd be huge. I'm I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, I think the lightweight nature of it makes it really appealing to like people like you, Cody, who don't exactly, and even I don't use Byte SMS anymore. Um, but there's a lot of users out there that want quick reply, but they don't want to go full blown you know application like Byte SMS. And these, this is good for those users. Shout out to John Corbett as well. He is the developer of this tweak. Yeah. So it, this is only for banner notifications. If you have a notification on your lock screen, can you act up on it? Or? Right now in the preview that I tried, it was just for banners. But uh, I think this is going to be something that Sentry tries to take like a, a mini player approach. You know how okay, yeah. that tweak was constantly updated mm-hmm. for a period yeah. of time. I think this is going to be the same way. So it should be interesting to see how it, it's fleshed out. It's a Nemo. Yeah. Any idea when that one's coming? I'd say pretty soon. It's um, I think they're wrapping up the first uh, release, and it should be out maybe even this week. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I'll be buying this one. All right, so that wraps up our <laughs> tweaks for the week. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about? Did you guys talk about the the million downloads? Oh no, we didn't. We the Let's Talk Jailbreak just crossed. Was it last week or maybe even the week before? It crossed a million downloads. It was, it was the week before, I yeah. think. We officially passed one trillion. Oh, no, wait, <laughs> one million downloads. Yeah, we are. I think I need to put a, a clapping sound effect. Dude, here. Hey. As you were introducing um, Animo, I was thinking we need a soundboard, and like I was thinking like I have a dramatic music behind you know like you introducing <laughs> the tweak Animo is by Sentry <laughs> developer that brought this and this. I was like if we had like a orchestra soundboard, <laughs> <laughs> that would sound awesome. So we could have we sh- we should look into a soundboard. With some good beatboxing skills there, ah. Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead listen to that listen to this guy <laughs> I, I bet Jeff gets down I bet Jeff can get down <laughs> I know he does actually I had, I'm not supposed to talk about it but I, I have seen some uh, I have seen some stuff I've seen some uh, I've heard some uh, some beats some beats and some you know vocals that was good stuff I'm just not going to say more because I was not even supposed to talk about it to begin with. But uh, anyway, we um, we crossed, and I think it was uh, not last week, I believe it was the week before, we crossed the 1 million down, uh, download mark. We are currently at uh, 1 million and 126,000 and something. Um, so obviously that's a huge, um, huge uh, stepstone. Uh, milestone. Stone? Milestone, yeah, I was like, that's not right. That's a huge milestone, yeah. We, uh, we did this in uh, today's episode 24, and I think we crossed it at episode 22. Um, 
So that's that's pretty big. I think a lot of podcasts would be very happy to have these uh, these numbers and. And of course, that's uh, all thanks to um, people who listen to it, because uh, it would be very hard for us to pretend we downloaded the thing a million <laughs> times ourselves. Um, so, you know, I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who is uh, listening to the show and everybody who actually makes it that far into the show, uh, which is about 40 or 50 minutes into it, and to listen to all the way to the end of the podcast. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to listen to it and to download it every week. And... Uh, Thank you for the awesome feedback you're sending us all the time, uh, whether it is on the, on the website or on Twitter. Um, that's how I found out that you guys loved uh, having Cody on the show. Um, that's how I found out that some people were bummed that wasn't there anymore, which made me feel really good. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, everybody, uh, for, for listening and, and keeping listening to the show. It's very nice. Well, that's hard to follow up. Very nice. <laughs> it is hard to follow. I was going to say, I think we saw at one time um, that the show was getting over 60,000 downloads per week. And, you know, we said this, I think, before that, man, that's that's bigger than some local radio stations, right? That's huge. So, yeah, just to, just oh, to add on to what Sebastian said. So uh, really thank you guys for listening. And, and thank you, too, for having me on here. I, I love getting to talk about technology and stuff with with friends. I don't have a whole lot of people in the outside world that understand, you know, Apple and why it's so interesting and jailbreaking and why that's so interesting. So I appreciate it. Oh, it's really good to have you on the show. It's, 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 it's working pretty good on the three of us. I think so. Awesome. Well, we look forward to, um, getting some user, uh, listener feedback in the comment section, please leave comments below. Um, and also, Make sure you remember to leave a comment with the hashtag, let's talk jailbreak. Yes, do it. <laughs> that was a little <laughs> awkward. Looks like it's a wrap. <laughs> right. All right, guys. Well, we'll talk to you next week. Of course, we'll, all three of us will be back next week. And we should have more Apple news, hopefully more rumors, more good stuff, more information about the new iPhones, et cetera. Okay, well, you guys have a good week. I'll be, um, I'll be in touch with you messages and uh, everybody else uh, talk to you next week later